Lawrence uh, University. This is where parents or prospective students come when they visit campus and want to talk to somebody about being a student here. So this is a very important part of the operation. Across the hall over here is our human resources area. Of course, human resources involves basically faculty staff issues. Uh, they handle things like insurance, handle things like uh, other, other benefits. Uh, they deal with a variety of personnel matters, contracts, those kinds of things. Uh, a very important part of the operation. Glad that you decided to stay and stayed on a permanent basis. For I, I can recall myself at the time being a, a candidate for student government president. That was one of the things in which I campaigned for, is for your permanent stay here at Georgia Southwestern. Now I can remember during your interim presidency, one of the important things that I saw you do that really impressed me and that really allowed myself to really campaign for your permanent stay here was how you actively responded to the devastating events that occurred in America on March the 1st. As far as the hurt, as far as the tornadoes that came through our city and how it really literally damaged a good portion of our city and our community. And I saw that how you were very active in making sure that the campus was, was safe and was secure. What were your thoughts during that uh, horrendous event? Well, first of all, if you recall, we were right in the middle of it. Uh, that night, we were watching television out in a little cottage that we'd rented out on Highway 49. And the uh, county had the television on. And they announced that the tornado had been sighted in planes and it was moving toward Americas. So she panicked. I said, ah, no, you know, it's not going to hit us. They always warn you, you know, they always give you a little more warning as necessary. But uh, the lights went out and they came back on and said, yeah, you see. And then the lights went out again. This time I stuck my head out the front door. I heard the roar. We ran in uh, to a little closet in the middle of the house and rode it out. And actually, I mean, literally rode it out. We got up the half the roof was blown off a tree and falling through one part, glass was everywhere. I mean, we were very fortunate that we weren't hurt. And actually, since it wasn't our place, we had really very little damage to anything except our, our cars, our automobiles got scratched up a little bit. But uh, anyhow, the next day, well, that night, actually, we stayed with neighbors, in fact, neighbors that we had not met, which tells you something, again, about the hospitality of, uh, of this community. Uh, these are people that we probably should have made an effort to meet before. But uh, that night, they didn't know us, we didn't know them, but they took us in, let us spend the rest of the night with them. The next day we were out here, and again, as you indicated, working to make sure that uh, everybody was okay. We were fortunate in that the, the, the university really did not take a, a direct hit. Uh, but in the aftermath, I think one of the reasons that, that I got a little more involved in the community, it became evident to me right away that the tornado in some ways, first of all, helped pull the whole community together in ways it hadn't been before. Secondly, I think it made people realize even more than ever how important this university is to the area's economy. And I think they expected some leadership from me and from this institution. They expected me to be a more active part of the community. Uh, coming in from the outside, a fresh perspective, uh, kind of helping people get things back together using the resources of the university in any way that we could to help. I was very impressed and very pleased that so many of uh, your fellow students stepped to the fore on that and were uh, around town over the next several weeks helping uh, in a variety of ways. So I can't take a lot of credit for myself. I think the institution generally was the key player here and I think uh, all of us campus community had that sense that we were needed, we were important, and that this was an opportunity for us to showcase what we're really about. And we're a lot about community service, we're civic minded, we are concerned about the area which we're in. Well, I can, I can assure you, Mr. President, that we appreciated your leadership during that time, even though we know that it was during interim capacity. 
but now more than ever, we do appreciate your leadership on a permanent basis. Yeah, if you want to head upstairs here, these stairs are apparently the original. This is how these uh, looked originally. This, by the way, that uh, the hole there in the ceiling above the rotunda was original, but for years after they rebuilt the building, they had filled that in. So when they came in and renovated, uh, the architect, contractor opened that up again. So we have that uh, opening up in the top. This is the original wood. You'll notice that the floors creak a little bit, but hey, this is part of the, the original character. Gives it that authentic sort of feel and sound. And again, this railing is all original. They had to restore, obviously, this is not the original railing, but this is what it looked like back in the early part of the century. The chandelier is something that we added uh, when we first moved back in this building. It was pretty clear to us that this was missing something. And what was missing, we felt, was a chandelier. So we shopped around. But that, we think that adds quite a bit to it. Uh, back this direction is our Office of Academic Affairs. This is where the Vice President of Academic Affairs and his staff hang out. what we do here, that is the faculty, it is the curriculum, it's really, in many ways, it's the, the heart of the institution. What they do is really what the institution is all about. Here we have, on the other side, the conference room. Uh, unfortunately, if you want to come in over this, let's, okay, well, let's go back this way. Uh, let me show you. This area was changed quite a bit when they came back and renovated and you'll notice the elevator there. You can imagine that back when this building was first constructed in the early part of the century, there was no elevator. Uh, this is a fairly recent addition, but again, a necessary any reconstruction and renovation. All right. Well, I know that um, with you serving in an interim capacity, when it came time for the presidential search, your name came up as the leading candidate, even though we're all aware, for those that are not aware in the university system of Georgia policy, that the interim president is unable to be a candidate for the permanent position of being president of a particular university within the university system. But throughout the uh, presidential process, as I stated, your name was brought up by so many uh, constituents, whether it be students or members of faculty, staff, alumni, uh, community leaders. And my question is, is what made you decide to go along with the people in terms of you becoming president? Uh, that's a, a good question. I think when I came, as I've shared with you before, my intent was stay here six months or so until the new president came in and would go back to our lives. We had things fairly well worked out. I was enjoying what I was doing, doing some writing, doing some consulting. My wife was enjoying her uh, teaching at the University of Kansas. As you know, we have uh, had a place both in Durango and in, uh, and in Kansas City. Uh, but we hadn't been here very long and uh, we're taken in, first of all, by the reception hospitality, the way the campus community, the local community, people just bent over backwards to make us feel welcome. And there was a kind of hospitality here that I had forgotten. As you know, I grew up in the South, grew up in Gainesville, Florida. And uh, I was reminded again of a lot of things about the South that I had missed being in Colorado. Uh, secondly, when I looked at the campus here, and I looked at Georgia Southwestern and the challenges that it faced, I thought, you know, here's a place that's ready to take off if with, with the right leadership and, and the right things happening. This place could become another major institution, obviously already a good place, but problems with growth, uh, problems with finances. There are several issues here that I saw. 